Hello friends, welcome back to day seven. This is the seventh video in our 13 video playlist on gas and bloating as a raw vegan. If you are interested in watching all of the videos in this playlist, the link is in the description box below. Today we're gonna to be talking about bloating in the terms of water retention. So there's two different kinds of bloating. When people say I'm bloated, they could mean two different things. Some people say that they're bloated with gas, other people say they're bloated with water. So we're gonna talk about water bloat in this video. Thank you so much for joining again for this video. We're gonna be talking about water bloating. So like I had mentioned, whenever somebody says, I'm so bloated, I don't know if they're talking about gas or if they're talking about water bloat. Wanted to talk about water bloat because that is, it can stem from digestion and there are things that you can do to help lower water bloat if you are experiencing that. But before we begin, again, we've got 40% off all of our eBooks. The code is NICECREAM40. You can find the link right here or in the description box below along with the link for all of the videos in this playlist. So how do we deal with water retention? When you are feeling bloated with water retention, you might feel puffy, you might feel a little bit heavier, and you might feel the bloat like you're blowing up like a balloon with water. This is something that can be easily remedied for a vast majority of people by lowering their salt intake. Salt is definitely something that we need to watch. Now, I am not anti-salt. I still use small amounts of salt in the form of coconut aminos, miso paste, and very, very randomly, like we're talking like once every couple months, I will use a pinch or two of salt in specific recipes. Like if I'm making a cashew cheese and I need to ferment that, salt goes really well in that. But again, it's not often that we make a cashew cheese. It's more of a, a holiday thing and we normally make it to share. We'll have a little bit of it and um, share it with everybody else. I feel like for me, because I have a lower blood pressure, I find that adding just a small amount of salt in the form of coconut aminos or miso paste does really well for me. Even if I'm eating like 2,400, 2,700 calories, if I go too long without a tiny, and we're talking like an eighth of a teaspoon of salt, doesn't need to be a lot. Whereas the normal amount of salt that the average person is eating is like over a teaspoon and a half throughout the day. Too much salt. But I've noticed if I add a little bit of salt, then I don't get low blood pressure symptoms and I remain stable. I don't get lightheaded or anything like that, but I just need to include a small amount into my diet. If you're eating more than that, then you run the risk of retaining a lot of water because of the amount of salt. Processed foods, animal products, restaurant foods, takeout foods, boxed foods, they all have a lot of salt in it. A, for taste, because we're overstimulated. When you're eating a standard North American diet, you need all that extra stimulation. When you move over to a raw diet, it's not as stimulated. As I mentioned in one of my other Vlogmas videos, that we need to accept that raw food isn't stimulating because it's not loaded with salt, but they load everything with salt so that we enjoy it, but also for preservative purposes. So canned foods, for example, packaged foods, all of that is going to be loaded with salt to preserve it. And we've got, you know, salted nuts, we've got salted food. We like to add salt to our already salty food. There's way too much salt going on, so that can create bloating in the body. Now, when you're a raw vegan, you wanna really watch how much salt you are eating. This can cause issues, again, <laughs> with water retention and bloating. So number one, decrease the amount of salt that you're consuming to a bare minimum. Get rid of it out of your diet and try to eat as low as possible. On top of that, if you're a raw vegan, then you're already eating a lot of hydrating foods, but add water to your diet. 
add water first thing in the morning. Drink a whole liter of water or more in the morning and really hydrate the body. We're all really dehydrated. <laughs> a lot of us are. And as a raw vegan, some people really like to eat a lot of dehydrated, like fully dehydrated foods, like fully dehydrated crackers, fully dehydrated kale chips, um, you know, like the fully dehydrated wraps, that kind of thing is dehydrating on the body and the body will retain water when you're eating dried foods. So increasing your water intake and decreasing the amount of dried foods that you're eating will really help. Nate and I do use our dehydrator quite often throughout the week, but we don't use it to fully dry stuff unless we're making say kale chips or crackers, which is really rare. We don't do that a lot. And when we do, we only eat a small amount. We're not eating like a whole bag of kale chips because I find that I retain water if I do eat that. And I found that out long time ago. So I try to stay away from a lot of the fully dehydrated stuff because I don't enjoy the water retention. Plus, a lot of stuff in the stores, like kale chips in the stores are loaded with salt as well. So on top of the dryness, we're eating the salt and it's going to cause issues with water retention. Obviously, we need to move, we need to um, de-stress, we need to relax, we need to improve our sleep. All of these things will improve our water retention as well. But increasing certain foods to help like diuretic foods will really help with balancing out that as well as obviously taking the salt out of your diet. So increasing foods like watermelon is very good diuretic food to eat more of. Parsley and cucumbers are amazing for diuretics. So you could even make a parsley cucumber dressing of some type with dates. I have some parsley recipes in my meal plans that are really good to help with water retention because they're high in, in parsley. You can add parsley to your smoothies. You can add parsley to your salad dressings and you can add parsley just to your salad along with dandelion greens. Dandelion greens are really good diuretics. So having a salad with parsley and cucumber and dandelion greens more often will help with, you know, long-term water retention. Again, make sure that you lower your salt and increase your water on top of everything else that you're doing. Adding more greens is going to be really important as well because they're high in magnesium and potassium. So that will help balance out the potassium sodium balance, but magnesium is essential as well to balance out that. And you can find that plenty in greens. So having lots of greens, big salads, all of that is going to help as well. You can also include things like more celery, more ginger, more cranberries. These are other foods, even juniper berries, if you're able to get some, will really help with that as well. So I hope this video helped somebody out there, hope something resonated with you. Thank you so much for joining on this playlist. I'm really having a fun time filming all of these for you guys. Please share in the comments. Let me know what's working for you, what's helping you with your digestion on a raw vegan diet. And you can find the link to the playlist to all of these tips for gas and bloating in the description box below, along with the link to all of our eBooks. Our eBooks are 40% off right now for you. You can use code NICECREAM40 to get that discount. Head on down there and check out all of our books. Get that 40% off. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We'll be back for video eight. I'm excited for that one. Coming soon, coming tomorrow actually, <laughs> to you. And I hope you have a wonderful day. I love you, I believe in you, and fruit on.